All right, so, oh, here it is. Um, yeah, I'm the Jeannie Pinder, the founder and CEO of clearhealthcost.com. We tell people what stuff costs in healthcare. So you might think that it's really hard to find out what stuff costs in healthcare, but we have a superpower. We know how to do it. <clears throat> that CBC blood test, it could be $19 or 522. The MRI could be 300, 400, it could be $6,221. So I came here actually, as Milton said, from the New York Times. I was there for almost 25 years as a reporter, editor, and HR exec. I volunteered for a buyout, and a year later, I won a Shark Tank type pitch contest in front of a jury of New York City venture capitalists who thought I could build a company telling people what stuff costs in healthcare. So uh, we, what we did with that initial money, first I actually thought about giving it back because I realized how hard it was gonna be, and then I got another grant, so I figured it was a sign from the universe that I had to go ahead and do it. I couldn't say no. Uh, what we did with the money was to build, this is our home website, clearhealthcost.com. Uh, you can see from the top we have a um, you know what, it's not working, actually. I don't know if I can do a live demo here. Oh, yeah, there it goes. Um, at the top, we have a kind of a kayak.com find prices search tool. We advertise here in the middle that we're journalists. This is not a shopping site, so we don't want you to think you're coming here and we're going to sell you something. We billboard some of the prices that you'll find on the inside. And the wide price ranges that you see here are actually from our reporting as journalists. We also do a blog where you talk about things like, is it cheaper to pay cash than use your insurance card? Well, yeah, sometimes it is. Let's talk about that. Like, what's that all about? How would you own and operate that knowledge? Um, this one over here on the right, how much does a colonoscopy cost, 600 or 5,400, is one of our biggest traffic drivers because people are finding that they're getting a colonoscopy and getting charged for it, right? Even though they think it's supposed to be free. So they go to Dr. Google and say, how much does a colonoscopy cost? And they find us. <clears throat> also, we do partnerships with other news organizations. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, this is really weird. So the partnerships that we have with other news organizations, I'll talk about in just a minute. Basically, the way it works is, um, if you wanted to do a search for something on our website, you'd go to the top and you'd type in something like cardio stress test. So we had to teach the search engine to use natural language in addition to the HCPCS uh, uh, language. If you wanted to find that within 100 miles of a common New York City zip code, you would go like this. It's like a kayak type search. And what you'd find is a results page that looks like this. For a cardio stress test, what does Medicare pay here? And why would you care? So Medicare pays 100. You would care about that because it's like a fixed or benchmark price in the marketplace. So we're educating people as well as telling them prices. And then you see a list of prices like this. We actually call providers and survey them on their cash or self-pay rates for common shoppable procedures. So for example, um, what is your cash price for a 93015 cardio stress test? If they won't give us a price over the phone, we out them. So the price is zero, because that's data too, right? You would want to know that. If you do get a price over the phone, though, you can see it ranges from 82 to 150, 251. Do I hear 500? Or how about $2,751? So let's say you're in your GP's office and she sends you for a cardio stress test and you can pull out your handheld and say, you know what, you sent me to the place that's $2,751.
I have a high deductible plan. I'd really rather go someplace else. So we've always been really interested in um, crowdsourcing and as an additional basis for data because we figured that people had a lot of information in their EOBs, their filing cabinets, their Google wallets. We've had this search tool, this share tool up at the top for ever since we launched. Why is this not working? This sh uh, share your prices invitation. But because we were a small startup, that didn't really turn out to be a very good thing for us until we actually uh, devised a plan of partnering with other news organizations. Because the internet is a noisy place, bringing traffic is a hard thing. So uh, what I'm going to show you now is one of our news partnerships. This would be with um, WVUE Fox 8 Live. It's a big TV station in New Orleans that has a high investigative um, unit. So what we do is build essentially a mini version of our website and we park it on our partners pages. This allows people on the left hand side you can contribute prices. So we're building what we call a community created guide to health costs with our partners. On the right hand side you can search prices. So how does it work? Let's say you wanted to tell us about your MRI. We have a bunch of autocompletes and pull downs here. So you type in MRI, pick your body part, type in the name of the provider, and you get an autocomplete and pull down menu powered by the Google Places API so we get clean data. Who's your insurance company? What was the date of your procedure? What were you charged? What did insurance pay? What did you pay? Big old comment box, how did you feel about it? Tell us how you felt about it. Don't hold back. Um, we make it possible for people to give us their email address. We let them know that it's not gonna be made public, but we'll use that for our reporting. We also invite people to give us their phone numbers so we can use that for reporting. And we ask them, would they like to send us their EOB? So that's backup for whatever they tell us. We also let them send us emails, invite them to um, drop a voicemail, um, agree to our terms of service, tell us you're not a robot, and when you click on this, you're in our database. So on the other side, you can actually search prices, but I think what I'm gonna do is search a San Francisco price set because we're actually here in the San Francisco area and because this is really interesting. So let's say you were looking for an MRI here same thing, type in MRI, pick your body part. Um, within 100 miles of a common San Francisco zip code. And you get a results page that looks like this. We pre-populate our partner's database with our hand-collected information. That's colored in orange. It's the base color of the app. Again, if they didn't give us a price over the phone, we out them, okay? Anything that comes in on the left-hand side, the crowdsource material is in blue with a little flag that says community member. In green, we're starting to get providers coming to us and telling us they want to put their prices in our database so they can compete on price. So watch these numbers on the left. Orange is ours, right? 500, 575. 580, there's a community member who said, I was told the procedure would be 1,850. I have a high deductible, so I talked to the office manager who said if I agreed not to report to Blue Cross and paid up front, it would be 580. So by this simple expedient, we're teaching people how to um, navigate around the healthcare marketplace. Uh, 602.85, this is one of ours, 857. Here's a Kaiser person, 973.25. That's almost double what the cash person paid. Watch these numbers go up. We're not done yet. 1664. Uh, how about this person? An insured person. Charged 2345. Insurance paid 487. You paid 1948. Was there somebody here from Sutter? Cal Pacific Medical Center? Okay, so if you look at these prices, you can see how possible it is for somebody to actually have agency and learn how to negotiate in the healthcare marketplace. Up to one of my personal favorites, the $6,221 MRI. 
So we let people search and, uh, and share data, and then we also use the data to make great journalism. Uh, this person on the top left got a $160 doctor's bill for a frozen shoulder diagnosis, and then she got a $1,434.01 bill for a facility fee. So we can write a story about how did that happen, how could you avoid it? My, I'm also particularly fond of the person who saved $3,786, and if you want to ask me about that in the question session, I'd be delighted to answer. And new from us, we're starting to get not only news partners, but also uh, business partners, employer associations, employers, and patient groups who want us to do a version of this for them, specific to their data. And that's how to find me. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any question? Why, yes, I would like to know how she saved that much money working with you. <laughs> Thank you. Do you anticipate uh, more engagement from insurers, third-party payers, that they would um, not necessarily reimburse for these higher cost options, specifically at hospitals where in an outpatient setting it can be performed typically at a lower price? Yeah, insurers are definitely interested in that. The other thing that's um, interesting from the insurer perspective is that when this information gets out there, it can be used in contract negotiations and also is used to make policy changes. Uh, for example, our work in Louisiana was instrumental in passing legislation, uh, consumer protection legislation and balanced billing, because there are people in healthcare who know this already, but when it gets to the general population, the civilians, it can be very disruptive. This is so important what you're doing. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, this is a, a very good effort. Um, what I'd like to comment on a couple of things. Uh, cost is complicated. For example, I'm a gastroenterologist. The colonoscopy cost you put in was 250 uh, And now that's just the physician fees. Right. So you need to kind of you know, separate that into you know, the facility fees, anesthesia, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Apart from cost, the other thing that would be really helpful is the quality measures of the place that's providing the service because there are places that are going to, uh, to provide inexpensive care, but the quality is horrible. So uh, try and see if you can add quality metrics to sort of balance out why something, for example, radiology, you could have ancient machines that are doing MRI scans for a fraction of the cost, but the quality they come out is, is terrible. So they're actually doing the disservice, and if you tell everybody it's inexpensive, and everybody goes there, you end up with more problems. I so love that's something that we would like to add to that. Yeah, no, I love this question. So if there were good quality metrics, price transparency and quality transparency are both broken in this marketplace. I'm sure you'll agree with me. If there were good, actionable quality metrics, we would incorporate them yesterday. Um, we don't think anybody really wants the cheapest appendectomy or the cheapest, right. So um, what we do think, though, is that um, the professions have a responsibility here. I had some radiologists in uh, San Francisco in a ballroom at a board meeting arguing about what makes a great um, MRI in front of me. They had multiple opinions. One of them said, um, it has to be a great machine. Then they had an argument about which machine is the best. Then somebody else said, well, if it's a great machine and it's not calibrated and maintained, then it's a terrible MRI. Somebody else said, well, no, it's the technologist. It's the person who arranges the body parts and takes the picture, because if that's a weak link, then it's a bad MRI. Somebody else said, no, 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 it's the radiologist, like the person who reads it that makes a good MRI. And they kept on in this vein for about 10 minutes, and then one of them said, you know, the worst MRI is the one that isn't taken because she thinks she can't afford it. Mm -hmm. And they all shut up, which basically the moral of the story is if they can't agree, then why is it on me to... You know, they, they should be able to know that. And plus, if there's a $300 MRI and a $6,000 MRI, somebody should be able to coherently explain why the one is 20 times better than the other. But it's not me. Right, right. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, my question is with regards to the, on the consumer side. 
What's to prevent or safeguard from, pardon the term, but trolls of the internet who like, like to specifically disrupt or competitors from one, from one business, business management office or another leaving false or misleading information? So we've been doing this now for seven years. We have not found a large number of people out there who want to lie to us about what they paid for their mammograms. It just seems not to be a good use of people's time. Although that question does come up frequently that people expect it to happen. It hasn't really. And we don't have trolls either. Um, we do make it clear to people that if they want to put a, their prices in our database, we welcome that and it's very easy for them to do it. And we make it clear that it's supplied by the provider and not gathered by our journalists. Great, I think there are last question there, uh, Erica. Uh, not so much a question, really, but um, I'm passionate about this. So patients assume that there's going to be quality built into every service, right? There's a standard of care, and they assume that wherever they go that they're going to get or that they should get quality care. And I think yeah. we in healthcare sometimes use quality as a crutch to differentiate ourselves from others when, in fact, you know, the consumer, the patient, um, is assuming that, you know, you have to follow a standard of care. Just, I, you you know, know, I think it's a great thing that most consumers, patients, or as we like to call them, people, come into, the, come into the healthcare marketplace expecting to get great care. I mean, I think it's a tribute to all of the professionals in this room that people don't believe that you're charlatans and shysters and incompetence and whatever. There are bad apples in the bunch, that's true. Um, I don't know how you correct for that other than to say if the American College of Radiology is credentialing people who have no business doing MRIs, then that, they should fix that. How about in the, in, in the, in the interest of credit, uh, time, we're going to take a break right now, and then we're going to come back here at 11.30. Then the next speaker, you guys want to enjoy it. This is when a super hot shot startup was an A-list inve investor backing them up, something really interesting. And I think for Jean's talk, she, you know, I think she have a couple of minutes to maybe Definitely ask your question. I think this is phenomenal. Too. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you for having me. Okay. Thank you.